it's Kiwi here for Soy and Shay and thank you so much for joining me for today's soap making video. Back before Christmas of 2020, Lisa from I Dream in Soap got in contact with me to see if I wanted to be a part of a Christmas collaboration that she was trying to organise. Now I had so many other things on at the time, I didn't think it was very fair to accept when I couldn't give 110% of my effort into it, especially going up against Lisa. If ever you've seen any of her work, you actually need 120% of your effort to go into a collaboration with her. So I did actually decline but say, said that we would do one in the new year. So everything settled down, we got back in contact with each other and we decided to go ahead with the collaboration and we've made the theme Australia and UK. So Lisa is going to be um, creating a soap which is based off of Australia or something Australian and I have based mine off of something to do with the UK. Now my when you see the cover photo for this one you're probably wondering what on earth acorns have to do with the UK but once we get into the making of this video I tell you a little bit about me and why I associate or think of the UK and acorns together now if you haven't already go and check out Lisa's channel I dream in soap her work is absolutely amazing she did send me a picture of the top of her soap and it is so super cute and I did second guess myself and wondered whether or not I should remake my soap because as always her work is just it is completely and utterly out there amazing go and check out her video I'll leave links to her channel down in the description box and if I can get the code for the video as well I'll pop it up in the right hand corner so you can access it easily go and check her out follow her channel as well because she makes some of the most amazing designs but for now what we're going to go and do is make my YouTube UK inspired soap, acorns and black oak. Let's go! Okay, so let's jump into making this soap. I have got my oils and my lye water solution all down to room temperature. We have got some beautiful weather for soaping. Our autumn is finally starting to kick in, getting lovely cool mornings. It warms up by lunchtime and then the evenings come cool again. So it is kind of perfect weather for soaping. So I'm taking every opportunity I can to knock out as many soaps as I can. So I've just poured my lye water solution into my oils. I'm going to give it a quick mix and then we're going to split it up for three different colours. Okay, so let's split up for the colours. This one here was a free sample I was sent from Aussie Soap Supplies called Amber Bronze. So I'm going to pour off a good amount for there. I also have in this pot, I have some Mocha Mica from My Mica Obsession. Pouring off a good amount into that one. And then into my bigger bucket here, and this is going to look like I'm just making a lot of mess, but I promise it will make sense. This is some melon fizzer. I'm going to pour a majority of that green in there, or that into the green, split the rest between these two, and get that colour mixed in. I'll give that a really good stir in just a moment, but what I'm going to do is add in my fragrance, and this is a beautiful golden colour. This is called Acorns and Black Oak, and it is an exclusive to Heirloom. Alright, sorry about that, I just had a delivery, and that one came from out of Ilux, so I'm keen to get this soap done so I can have a smell. But as I was saying, this is a Heirloom... Um, exclusive it says on there sadly once it's all gone she's not getting it back in which is just a shame because it smells really nice it's got mossy notes with fruity milky vanilla notes it says and it's got lavender citrus acorn amber vanilla nutmeg and musk through it it says that it um, discolors to a medium beige and no acceleration which I'm very pleased to say is true um, it, it's got a slight rice, but just giving it that bit of a stir, that is getting rid of that. It smells really good. It's, when you actually read the description online, 
Um, it's kind of a long-winded description and I was kind of left thinking well what does it really smell of and I can now understand why the description was so long-winded <laughs> on there it's quite masculine but it's very fresh and clean at the same time I think this is one of those masculine smells that a lot of my female customers will end up going for it has yeah that one's slightly ricin again in there as well it's definitely not accelerating which is a bonus and as i said this hand stirring is getting that ricing out so i'll get this bit all mixed in and then we will start doing a bit of a pour in fact this one might need a bit of a stick blend just because it's so much bigger let me get the stick blender in there and then we'll start see there we can see that it's definitely rising but it's not too bad so let's get this um, mixer in there and then we'll start getting it ready to pour all right so what I'm actually going to do is pour most of this green back out of this jug here the reason I do it this way is because the jugs just aren't quite big enough to split between the three and leave me enough room to mix in color so I always make a bit of a mess when I want to do this sort of pour so I've just left myself some green in there and then what I'm going to do is from the side, I'm just going to alternate pouring these in. I'm going to work fairly quick. It's, it's not exactly accelerated, but it is quite thick. Um, so we should get some very interesting pours out of this one. mold which is this one here hopefully I won't be using these ones for too much longer let's start pouring I'm just gonna let it go all the way down up throw it all over the sides while I'm at it and we'll get the rest of this scraped out actually do on the top of that one I just felt that it wasn't working what I was trying to achieve but this these are the little embeds I'm going to put on so these are some little acorns that I've made so I have done some little whole ones and I even managed to get that nice little bumpy look on them so once I actually had my little acorn formed I ran these around the bottom of a sieve to get that sort of crisscross pattern and then I also did some little half acorns so each soap will get a whole and a half acorn on here I am going to take my gloves off to do this because I do find if I keep my gloves on I get my fingers all in the soap and everything else if I take my gloves off I don't tend to dip them in the soap for some reason I don't know how that works because those gloves are nice and tight First thing I'm going to do on here though is I'm going to put on some of this Eco Glimmer Glitter which Tierra from Luna Faye sent me. This is the Flickering Flame and I just felt that it had all the perfect colours to represent those acorns. Especially seeing as my acorns are in that sort of autumn stage given that Australia is currently in autumn at the moment. All those lovely golden ambers and browns and that sort of colour so we'll give that a really good sprinkle there 
And then we'll start getting these little acorns on and I will give you the reasoning behind why I chose a acorn themed soap as being my UK inspired soap. So what I will be doing with them, I will have it so that one of the bigger acorns kind of sits up and then we'll have one of the half acorns that you can see the little tail like so and I'm going to do that on all of them. So you know acorns probably isn't the first thing that most people think of when they think of the UK but the reason I actually went for them I'll give you a little bit of my sort of history where I'm from and things like that. I was born in the UK if you didn't already know that and I was actually born in a place called Colchester which is just outside of London in the Essex area so yes I am an Essex girl um, Colchester actually used to be the old Roman capital of Britain so it's got a lot of history in Colchester but we lived there for well it would have been about six and a half I think when we moved six and a half almost seven when we moved up to Nottinghamshire which is where Sherwood Forest is Robin Hood and all of those sort of um, historical things we lived in a little town called Bullwell and I remember everyone calling it wet and windy Bullwell was what I remember most about that but I do remember um, the cup we only lived there for a couple of years but I do remember going into Sherwood Forest and I actually remember visiting Sherwood Forest as a kid when you could still go inside the famed tree that is all about Robin Hood. You can no longer actually go into it. It is a giant, um, I believe it is an acorn tree, um, and it's got this massive hole underneath the um, base of it. Well, the base of it's grown so there's a big hole underneath in the middle of the tree, and that is supposedly where Robin Hood hid. And when I was a kid, you were still able to actually go inside that tree. These days you can't, I think they stopped, it must have been about 15 to 20 years ago, they actually put up big fences because they decided it was too much of a risk because basically the hole's there because the tree has rotted. So they now stop people from actually going inside of that tree. But I do remember going inside that tree as a kid and I've been with, my dad went inside it as well. I don't remember my mum going inside it, but both dad and I did go inside this big um, hollow inside this tree. And I was always fascinated by the oaks uh, where we lived. There was a couple of places we lived where we had the big oak trees out the front of our house. And I used to love collecting these little caps because if anyone else, probably kids still do it today if they're not playing on their computer games, may have actually collected the caps and used them as little hats on little dolls and those sort of things. So the acorn for me was always one of those sort of trees that you could get hours and hours of entertainment out of there the oaks were great trees for climbing one of the places we actually lived in colchester was right on the edge of a forest and i remember all the acorn trees that were around the edge of this forest and my friend and i used to go and um, we had a little den and we used to play around in all the oaks and you could sit on the lower branches because they always have these big thick branches on them um, and they were always a lot of fun for me. Something I remember growing up seeing the oaks everywhere when I was a kid. So when we discussed that we would do a, she would do an Australian themed soap and I would do an English themed soap. After much thinking, I thought, well, I'm going to do something based on where I once lived and what I actually do remember most of all from being a kid. And that was all about the oaks. So I should have one spare of these once I get to the end here. There they are. I've got one more little thing to pop on here as well. So I am going to put a couple of these on here. I know that they're a little bit out of proportion to the acorns, but these are the leaves that I made for the wind or the autumn leaves soap, and I made them using the I Dream in Soap soap extruder tool. Um, it was the flower and leaf set, and she had these really cute leaves in there, and these just remind me of the little acorn leaves. So I'm just going to pop. Oh, a couple on each of these bars all the way along and they are in those sort of autumny colours 
that should match with the inside of the soap here. Okay, so here is the acorn soap. I am really pleased with how this one is turning out. I'm gonna leave this one sit overnight and we will be back shortly and we'll cut it open and see what we've got. We are ready to cut into our acorn and black oat soap. I am absolutely loving this one. I know I say that about all of my soaps, but this one is just really reminding me. The green really reminds me of the sort of um, Robin Hood hat and the um, outfit that he wore, especially in the Disney version of Robin Hood, that really bright green, and the Men in Tights one. That one was hilarious. But then you've got those sort of Brand, two brown colours there that just remind me of the acorn nut themselves because the acorns can be lots of different colours. I went for their kind of end of their uh, life when they turn that beautiful golden colour but you can actually find acorns that are green with the green little cap on them as well but I, I just thought given we're going into autumn let's go for those real autumn colours. I am all lined up hopefully we won't cut any of those acorns. I think we've got a couple there. Um, I'm a little bit stuck because that's my little test end there. But I think we're going to have to change it around this way. Let's cut it differently this time. Let's go from this end instead. Because I do want to line it up so I'm not cutting the acorns too badly. Um, but I do want to get my test end from there. That is looking good. We've got a couple of minor casualties, but nothing too bad. This one has set up really, really hard. I came out to the shed in the morning or this morning, and this was so hard I could actually unmold it. And I don't know why, because it's exactly the same as all my other recipes. It must be to do with the fragrance. But let's take a look at what we've got inside. All right, so because we've cut backwards, let's start backwards as well. And I'm gonna go for this one on the end, mainly because I've seen the end of that soap. And that is giving me some real Sherwood Forest kind of vibes in there. Um, I can see big tree trunks of the oaks and then that sort of green canopy of trees across the top. I'm really pleased with how that's come together. And there is the top with the two little acorns and the couple of little leaves on there. It is very bold, distinct colors, so no swirling in here. And it does look like I've got a glycerin river or a glycerin ring going right around that sort of dark brown colour. I'm really, really loving how that gives it a little bit of depth and shadow in there as well. Really pleased with how that's come up. No swirls like I usually do. Very much those sort of bold colours, but I think it just suits the soap really, really well. As I said, it reminds me walking into the forest um, in Sherwood Forest and seeing the big trunks off the trees and all the green canopy around it. Really, really pleased with it. So this is my English inspired soap. Probably not what some would have done as an English inspired one, but it has some really nostalgic memories for me. Now, if you haven't already done so, go and check out Lisa's video from I Dream in Soap and go and see what her Australian inspired soap is. I know I'll be going to check that out very soon as well. So I hope you have enjoyed coming along with me on this little soap collaboration that I have done with Lisa. If you did, why not leave us a thumbs up and any comments down below. And until the next video comes out, I hope you have a great one and I will see you then. Bye.